Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, a former city councilman is sworn in to higher office. And City Cable 3 goes back to school with some seniors for a day. Plus, see the progress of this magical moving masterpiece. And learn how to protect yourself from getting robbed. These stories and much more are just seconds away on today's edition of This Week in Torrance. This Week in Torrance for October 20th through the 27th starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jen Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Torrance is fortunate to be represented twice in the state legislature by former members of the city council. Reporter Stacy Atkins has more. Former Assemblyman George Nakano led the way and now Ted Lieu is the second Torrance City Council member elected into the California State Assembly. I'm truly humbled and grateful that so many of you have attended here. Lou's swearing-in ceremony took place at the Toyota Meeting Hall. The room was filled with local dignitaries from the 53rd District in attendance to support the person who continues to demonstrate his concern for others. Many were sharing stories of how Lou won over their respect. I guess it was a couple weeks ago. What did I ask you to do, Ted? It was something that I thought was important. He said, no, I can't go. It's my monthly uh, training, uh, reserve duty. And I think that speaks volumes about Ted. The first speaker of the evening was the longest serving mayor of the city council, Mayor Dan Walker. The mayor spoke of Lou as not only a colleague, but a friend. You can't ask for more than to have someone you were close to and that you trust in a position of representing not only your city, but the entire South Bay. Lou's training as a lawyer, his service to his country through the military, and his constant vision for a better government earned him the district seat. He ran his campaign on four issues, education, environment, transportation, and public safety. Lou's reputation is one of caring about everyone around him, which is evident in his priorities. The first priority of government is to protect our citizens. And as we saw in Hurricane Katrina, as we saw in the wildfires, if government can't do that, then nothing else follows. Lou currently holds the rank of major in the United States Air Force Reserves. He and his wife, Betty, who is a former deputy attorney general, reside in Torrance with their young son, Brennan. I look forward to working with each and every one of you as we make this district and we make California a better place to work and to live and to play. Reporting for This Week in Torrance, this is Stacy Atkins. Thank you, Stacy. Ted Lieu was elected into the 53rd Assembly seat following in the footsteps of his late friend, Mike Gordon. Well, Torrance City Council members made a decision this week regarding the seat left vacant by Ted Lieu. Rod Guyton, president of Denton Alloy Products, will complete the remainder of Lieu's term. Guyton also serves on the Torrance Planning Commission. The council previously agreed to appoint a new council member to avoid having an election in April, just two months prior to the regular municipal election held in 2006. A special election would have cost the city $120,000. Now, whether or not Guyton stays on after his term will be decided by the June 2006 election. Nine Torrance residents have filed applications to run. They include Charles Deemer, Peter Donnellan, Jeannie Fuller, Scott Goebel, Mike Griffiths, Rod Guyton, Maria Tenzera Marino, Lee MacArthur, and Bill Sutherland. Next, we have some good news for seniors. The Social Security Administration has announced that they will get an extra $39 a month in benefits starting the new year. This cost of living adjustment will affect more than 50 million beneficiaries and reflects a 4.1% increase. Officials say this year's increase is larger than last year's, mainly because of rising energy costs. According to the Social Security Administration, the average retired couple will receive a monthly check of about $1,648. Again, seniors and other beneficiaries will see this increase starting Starting in January 2006. While seniors are getting a little bit more a month to help pay for their bills, the City of Torrance is helping in a different way. The Senior Taxi Service provides discounted rides to Torrance residents over 65 years of age. Providers include all Yellow Taxis, Bell Cab, and South Bay Yellow United Checker Cabs. You must register in person to qualify, and there are some restrictions. For more information, call this number 310 618 2536. 
Toyota, Japan's largest automaker, who also has sales and marketing headquarters here in Torrance, has grabbed a greater market share than their U.S. competitors. The American manufacturers earned a sharp increase in sales recently by offering consumers the same discounts as their employees on new car purchases. This helped drive sales of U.S.-made cars and clear out inventory, but now that the discount is, program has ended, Toyota is back up on top. Toyota now accounts for the highest sales with 18 percent of the U.S. market share. Well, still straight ahead, find out what brought these grandparents back to school. And we'll tell you how even the most artistically challenged can help turn this metal sculpture into something we all can be proud of. Stay with us right here on City Cable, Channel 3. Before you start an online relationship with a guy, think about how it could end. May I have your attention, please? Would the owner of the spare tire, <laughs> slightly hairy, uh, with a little brown mold to the left of the belly button, it's an innie, please report to the press box and retrieve your appendage. Oh, they must have lost this parking further away from the stadium and walking in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're back to the action. The greatest source of America's generosity is the good heart of the people. In the aftermath of the devastating tsunami, we come to you not as presidents, but as two private citizens. Everyone can help and every dollar contributed will impact someone's life. So visit usafreedomcorps.gov to choose a reputable, authorized charity to accept your donations directly. No one can change what happened. But we can all change what happens next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These people just got a shot. Thank you. While you may not expect this reaction, Thanks. It makes perfect sense because it was a flu shot. Thank you. And they're the people who need it most. Thank you. The elderly, toddlers, pregnant women, and others at risk. Thank you. Millions of shots are on the way. Appreciate it. If you're at risk, get vaccinated. If you're not, please give others a shot. Welcome back. It may look like the students have gotten older at one local elementary school, but it was just for one day. Reporter Christina Lee has a story. This may not look like a normal day at one of Torrance's elementary schools. Kids seem more cheerful and grandparents more active. John Adams Elementary School recently held their 10th annual Grand Friends Day. Some of the activities included gluing paper together, coloring with crayons, and reading It's a Special Day. Tables were turned as the kids served their grand friends food while their pals stood in cafeteria lines. Children enjoyed running or even wheeling grandma around on the playground, and others were content just visiting. The special day ended with a picnic that included all family members. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Christina Lee. Thanks, Christina. The Parent Teacher Association has sponsored Grand Friends Day for the past 10 years. Some students of a different type of school will be graduating this month. New recruits of the Torrance Fire Department are set to join the ranks. Fire Station 2 is the location of the ceremony where speakers will welcome the new men to the force. Following the event, the grads will put on a demonstration on the drill grounds behind the station. The graduation and demonstration will be held on Thursday, October 27th at 10 a.m. The name of a fallen Marine will be added to the city's Veterans Memorial next month. Torrance resident Ricardo Crocker, who is working in Iraq to improve infrastructure and medical care, was killed last May during a rocket-propelled grenade attack. Crocker, a Santa Monica police officer and Marine, has been described as a caring and concerned soldier who received more mail from friends and relatives than anyone else. While at home, Crocker mentored underprivileged children and was an active member of the Police Athletic League. Crocker's name will be etched onto the Torrance Veterans Memorial on Thursday, November 10th at 2 p.m. That's located next to City Hall at Torrance Boulevard and Maple Avenue. Along with friends and family, city officials and representatives of the Marine Corps will also be present. The seven members of the 2006 Tournament of Roses Royal Court were announced this week. 
They will attend more than 150 community and media functions, including an appearance at the Torrance Rose Float Association banquet during their reign. The parade has been a New Year's Day event for 116 years, but officials say that it traditionally is not held on a Sunday, so the upcoming 117th Rose Parade will take place on Monday, January 2nd. This year's theme is It's Magical, and the City of Torrance entry in the parade is more than halfway finished. Here's Sophia Pop with the story. As safety crews start their engines, so does the city of Torrance. This year marks its 52nd annual participation in the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade. Just a really beautiful float and we're very excited with this design. Designed by world-renowned Raul Rodriguez, this year's float is titled Love is Magical. It features a 22 feet high mechanical Juliet and a real life Romeo. For the 10th year in a row, Fiesta Floats takes on the responsibility for making sure every detail is carefully built into this 35 long by 18 feet wide float, a huge task that takes a lot of hard work by the many people involved. Well, this is our first test drive and then there will be more work done by Fiesta in completing the design and then when they have the fire drill test, uh, which will be later on in the year, um, we will have actual riders on the float for that test, and so that will be the next step. This is just one of the steps the city of Torrance is taking to make sure that this float will become a reality for the Tournament of Roses Parade in 2006. We look at various um, mechanical um, uh, components of the float. We have actual float mechanics that come and look at the floats and make sure that all of the systems are running properly. Safety crews test drive the floats year-round to check for proper measurements and visibility. Various drills take place to ensure everyone from the operating crew to the talent aboard the float are prepared in the event of an emergency. And we've had relatively few tows over the last several years because the builders have done a great job of upgrading the floats and uh, the floats are mechanically usually very sound by the time they get into the parade. I'm Sophia Pop for This Week in Torrance. Thanks, Sophia. Residents can help decorate the float during the month of December and no artistic ability is necessary. If you would like to become a part of Torrance history, the final decorator orientation will be held on Thursday, November 17th at 7.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. For more information, call 310-618-2930. While the Torrance Rose Float Association has documented their many award-winning floats, another Torrance gem has been acknowledged as an important part of the city's history. The 60-year-old Torrance Airfield is now the star of the documentary Taking Flight, the History of Torrance Municipal Airport. The 50-minute profile chronicles the airport's evolution from a military facility to modern municipal airport. It was first known as Lamita Airstrip and was used as a World War II training camp for the Army Air Corps. The airport was handed over to the city in 1946 and later named named after Torrance resident and war hero Louis Zamperini. Today it sits on 500 acres and is home to more than 800 aircraft and more than a dozen aviation businesses. The documentary will begin airing right here on City Cable Channel 3 beginning on November 2nd. Well, still straight ahead to find out about new ways to fight the common cold. And we'll show you what Torrance police and fire were doing at the mall recently. We'll be back in just a minute. You're watching the best in community news right here on City Cable Channel 3. You don't need to go to extremes to prevent the flu. You just need common sense. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. Avoid close contact. Keep your hands clean. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth, and nose. And if you're sick, stay home. Remember, with a little common sense, you can prevent getting or giving the flu. Please, give others a shot.
When I found out my jeans were made using child labor and sweatshops, I wrote a letter to the company saying, reconsider your labor practices. A few months later, I get a letter back saying, thanks for being a loyal customer, and they included a coupon for a 25% discount on their jeans. So I got smart, wrote letters every day to all the stores that carry the brand, asking them to stop supporting the companies who use child labor and sweatshops. And I just kept getting letters back, thanking me for my concerns, and more coupons for more discounts on more jeans. So I'm telling my friend about it, and she flips out, saying that between all the letters and coupons, some paper company cut down a small forest driving off two indigenous tribes, hundreds of endangered animals, killing thousands of plant species, some of which may have contained vaccines for HIV, cancer, and syphilis. Meanwhile, the guys cutting down the trees are 13-year-old kids who will work night and day for months just to save up enough money to buy a pair of jeans made by child labor in sweatshops. The recent fires and heavy rains were a good reminder that you can never be overly prepared.